and there it goes, running off of propane. Super easy, super slick, and crazy quiet. I love these generators. Today I want to discuss and uh, show you uh, three things that uh, I think are important when it comes to backup power. If you follow my channel at all, uh, you know that uh, I love solar power stations. I've done uh, many reviews and videos on those. But I do want to touch on uh, something that I think is critical when it comes to backup power, and that is uh, some kind of uh, gas generator. First thing I want to talk about is the wisdom in pairing gas with batteries and, and power stations. Uh, if you're like me, most of the time when the power goes out, uh, it's due to a, a crazy storm uh, or something like that, and there's usually clouds and it's not a bright sunny day like it is today. So generating power with solar panels can somewhat be difficult uh, for the first little while. Obviously, you want to have your power stations charged up, uh, but uh, you know if it's a prolonged snowstorm, which is usually the case uh, here where I live, you end up needing more power before the sun comes back after the storm. And so having uh, a backup uh, power source like this uh, is critical. Keyword being backup. I still like to have my batteries and power stations be the first line of defense, and then this just helps supplement that. It also contributes to operational security. So I can run this in the daytime, charge up my power stations while I'm awake and can keep tabs uh, easily on it. And then at nighttime, I just sail through the night uh, using this power stored in the batteries and the power stations. And this is tucked away inside safe and sound. There's no noise. There's nothing drawing attention to me at that time. The other thing that uh, I want to talk about, oh, part two, is smaller size generators that can be expanded. So in my case, I have the EU2200i, uh, and I have the companion model uh, to this, so I can parallel them uh, together. And I found that that works uh, the majority of the time. In fact, one of these usually provides power for my critical loads 90% of the time. Uh, there's just a few occasions where I need a little extra power, and in that case, I fire up the other one. But I get incredible run times and efficiency doing that. Uh, because just this little teeny generator that's just sipping power. Granted, this is not going to, you know, fire up my oven or my full house uh, air conditioner. So there are some needs that, uh, you know, people have that uh, I uh, necessar don't necessarily need. I have like a mini split uh, that I use and it keeps one of my uh, areas uh, cool and heated. This runs that just fine because uh, it's just a small 9000 BTU 120 volt mini split and that covers my bases till the power comes back on. So again, everybody's different, uh, but I think there's wisdom in getting generators that can be scalable. So maybe you get one of these and then uh, a slightly larger one that, that can do 240 volt split phase. And so when you have the need to fire up the whole home air conditioner or fire up the oven or whatever you can, but it's not that giant generator running all the time. And this one can just kind of keep the other loads going while solar can't uh, fill that in. So I personally have, am of the opinion that if you are running power stations of any kind, uh, one should have some kind of backup power solution that uh, doesn't uh, rely 100% on the sun shining. Part three that uh, I wanna talk about is having contingencies and multiple power sources. So it's all good and uh, well to be able to dump some gas into this bad boy and uh, fire it up. Uh, but sometimes I've been shirking and haven't uh, gone to the gas station to get gas or replenish my gas stores. Some people are really good at that. Other people like myself are really bad at that. <laughs> and I don't want to ever be caught without some kind of solution. So in my case, I converted, and uh, you can see part of this, I'm gonna go into a little more depth on this conversion, but I converted my generator to uh, be tri-fuel. So not only can I put uh, regular gasoline in it, I can also run this on propane and natural gas. Honda and Hutch Mountain uh, that uh, provides these conversions are not sponsoring this video or uh, didn't send me anything. This is something I paid for with my own money about six, seven years ago, actually. I just want to make this uh, as educational as possible. Now, if you don't have a gas generator, you can buy 
generators that already have the setup to do at least dual fuel and in some cases tri-fuel and I highly recommend doing that. That way you have two options to be able to power your generator. Let me show you though how easy this uh, particular conversion was uh, because this Honda generator uh, is the bomb. I absolutely love it. So I got this conversion kit from Hutch Mountain and I'll leave a link uh, for them uh, down in the description. Uh, be sure and check them out. The quality and customer service can't be beat. Uh, so you just have to simply drill a hole right here uh, to be able to get this uh, adapter through. And, uh, and then it just comes with, I don't know, it's hard to see, but there's this hose. And it comes down, down here, across the bottom here, up. And it just goes between the uh, air intake from the air filter and uh, the carburetor. That's where it injects the natural gas and the propane. And that's that's it. That's the only part that goes in the generator itself. Super, super easy to install. I'm not gonna go into the installation details, but basically there's just a few screws that you take. This air filter apparatus slides out. You put the fitting on and then just slide it back into place, route it through, screw this on, you're done. So it's super, super easy and straightforward. They also uh, provide you with everything you need uh, in the box for this conversion. Now, again, I have two uh, of the Honda generators. So that's why I have two of everything. But uh, you've got your high pressure regulators for the propane. And then you've got uh, your regulators for both propane and natural gas. You use both these regardless of which one, which source you're using. You can get extension uh, hoses for uh, natural gas uh, sources. In my case, I have a tap point really close that I can just plug these straight into, so I don't need the extension hose. But you can get those from Hutch Mountain. And, uh, and then they provide you uh, with all the parts and fittings and even new jets. So it's super easy to switch it between propane or natural gas and get the ultimate efficiency and runtime by swapping out uh, the fuel jets that come in these little uh, canisters here. And then just kudos to them, if, uh, if for whatever reason you have trouble um, installing it, there's some great videos and their support is incredible. Uh, you can give them a call. If they don't answer for whatever reason, they'll uh, call you back uh, really, really fast. But check out these uh, instructions here. It is so detailed and so easy to see uh, they've got you know arrows pointing to stuff from your actual generator so you know this is for the eu 2200i and the eu 2000i and it's yeah a picture from inside my unit it makes it so easy to to know what you're looking at and what you need to do to to make everything work so check them out uh, if you've got a Honda generator and you want to convert it uh, like I did mine. I'm also going to leave a link uh, for one of my favorite dual fuel generators that are this uh, same size that are substantially less expensive than the Hondas that still really do a great job. Let me just show you how easy this is to set up. So there's quick connect fittings here. It's as easy as snapping them together just like that. So super easy. This comes over here. Here's the demand regulator. I have this system where this has a quick connect fitting as well, which uh, allows me to plug this directly into the RV propane port. If I don't want to connect it to its separate uh, propane tank. And then we've got uh, the high pressure regulator here. So uh, to start this, it's extremely easy. Turn the gas on at this point right here. Okay. Now, we don't need to worry about uh, turning the choke on or anything, because that's just for gas. So we'll leave that in the off position. Uh, we'll come over here and make sure the eco throttle uh, mode is turned off. Okay, and then uh, we come over here, turn the ignition switch to the on position. And then there's this little button right here uh, on the regulator, right here. And you just push this and you'll hear some hissing and that kind of primes the the system that lets some gas flow through and uh, into the the system and uh, gets things ready to go so we'll just uh, do this for a couple seconds okay. 
Okay. Something like that's great. All right, and now we're gonna try to start it. I'm gonna need two hands. And there it goes, running off of propane. Super easy, super slick. Crazy quiet. I love these generators. So now if I don't have uh, gasoline or whatever, I can just uh, run it off propane or natural gas. Either one. At the moment I have a jet for propane, so that's what I'm showing you. Propane is super easy to store. There's a lot of uh, benefits. It does give you a little less power output though than normal gasoline, so keep that in mind. To turn it off, it's quite easy. Turn that on, kill the gas. And it uh, burns up the rest of the gas and uh, you don't have to worry about there being gas in the system. And then you can just turn the engine switch off. If you're just stopping for a little while and you're gonna start it again and not take it apart, you can just flip that off. Then it keeps everything primed and ready to go. So now this gives me three options uh, and sources to run this from. It gives me a lot more peace of mind and uh, is a lot uh, easier to uh, prep for uh, than uh, trying to store and rotate through uh, a bunch of gasoline. So these are my thoughts and uh, three uh, important things that I feel are pretty major in terms of uh, using a gas generator and part of your prepping plans. But I want to hear from you. Uh, be sure and uh, sound off down in the comments uh, your thoughts and ideas as far as you know, small generators versus large generators, having multiple fuel sources, storing gasoline, what works for you, what doesn't. Uh, how about propane? I want to hear how uh, you integrate gas power generators with solar powered power stations and how you've uh, prepared to uh, be able to run your house in a grid down situation. You know, all those things. I want to hear from you. As a result, uh, it should help the community. So uh, let's all uh, collaborate, uh, share your thoughts, share your experiences. Don't forget to give us that like and uh, subscribe. It really does uh, help out uh, the channel and uh, helps me be able to get uh, connected with uh, more great people like yourselves. We'll catch you next time.